So something I uh, forgot to tackle during the 8080 card work, and hopefully this will show up on camera, is this mess right here. Uh, the 7805 originally had a three pin connector that slid onto the pins and at some point they lost that connector or damaged it and they've actually taken the wires with the little uh, crimped on connectors that would slide over the pins and they've soldered those little connectors directly to the pins on the regulator. I added this piece of electrical tape underneath when I noticed this just as an added protection but it wouldn't take much for these to move around and short. Uh, if the plus 12 which is I believe on the orange wire was to short to ground here in the middle that would short that plus uh, 12 volt rail out coming out of the uh, uh, power supply. It's not fused. There's no poly fuses. It would just put a direct short across that, you know, that large filter cap and the winding of that transformer. And I'm assuming it would melt leads down. It could take traces off the board. This is just dangerous and ugly and really needs to be cleaned up. And what I'm going to do is just uh, remove the device, clean all this off, trim the leads back, strip them, and solder them directly on with some shrink tubing. Uh, I've taken a bit of time to draw out what the traces on the printed circuit board look like, where the wires connect. There's those two tan on caps. I don't know if you can see this here. We've got the white wire, the black, and the orange with the tantalum caps, and I've kind of drawn that layout here just so I know what wires go where. And I've kind of drawn the regulator from the face, and again labeled where the three leads go. So uh, first step in this is going to be to remove the regulator off of the, the bracket slash heat sink here. And that of course requires me to find a screwdriver. immediately notice there's no heat sink compound of any kind behind there. It's not called for in the manual. There is a uh, lock washer on this. So that's at least done better. I will set that aside so I don't lose it. And Yeah, I, I believe I've got enough lead length here to clean this up. If not, I'll have to replace those wires. I don't know how well this is showing up. Oh. Hopefully we're getting focus there on the mess that those connections are. It's just something that I, I can't live with. Uh, it's just really ugly. So we've got the soldering pencil fired up. Turn up the tip here. I can get a hold of the solder, which I can't at the moment. What I don't want to do is because there's a lot of solder here, is flip that solder onto the board as I do this and potentially cause short. So I'm going to protect the board from these as I disconnect them. They actually slid. Wow, oh, that is really ugly. Again, I'm getting little balls of solder rolling all over the card here. You can see where solder flipped off. They actually took that mechanical contact and kind of slid it onto the lead as best they could. For attaching those. That's just ugly in every way imaginable. So we've got the three leads exposed. I'm just going to trim the ends directly off of these, leaving myself as much wire length as possible. Now to be truly factory, I would have wanted to found the, the, the little three pin slide on connector. I don't have anything like that available. Uh, in digging through my stuff, I thought I had some of those, but I just don't. 
And so I'm just going to do a direct solder connection here. So we've got a pretty equal length of wire exposed on all three of those. I will tin those up. Insulation, of course, melts back a bit due to the heat, so you get a little bit longer exposed lead. Again, using the paper to protect the printed circuit board from any solder that might drop off. So we've got those cleaned up. This is somewhat ugly. Clean these off a bit. Go ahead and straighten them out. Not sure how well this is showing up or showing up at all on camera. That's my shrink tubing. Shrink tubing is your friend. You can almost never have too much. I'm going to need yellow. They've got a little bit larger diameter red lost in here. I'd like to keep the coloring the same if at all possible. That's going to be a little small, I think. No, well, that diameter might actually work well. think there's any orange in here, unless I'm going to use the yellow on the orange lead. It's the closest color match I have. I want the shrink tubing to completely cover the lead. And a fair amount of the wire length. Oh, pulled out multiple pieces of I didn't want to use the thicker yellow. I think the thinner will work better. So I can get myself a good length here. With enough length to get down over the wire. Turn these all to the same length. It'll just look a little neater. Is a shrink tubing. Uh, actually, that's white. Why am I thinking red? Maybe I'll use the red on the orange. Uh, need to step away from the camera for a moment. And I'm not sure why I was thinking. I, I guess as I'm so used to thinking of red as plus five that. Uh, I just naturally went red. I'll, I'll grab a piece of white shrink tubing here. Actually, let me pull the orange back off because that's what I was using as the gauge for the length. Get a piece of white in the same length. Does that length seem short looking at it? No, it's fine. Because this is pretty tiny shrink tubing, a little bit larger diameter would have been perhaps a little safer here. I'm sliding the shrink tubing as far down the lead as I can, so it doesn't pick up heat from the soldering I'm going to do. Actually, just put the rest of the shrink tubing away. Side, whether it'll be easier to do it with it mounted to the board first. 
Well, there actually is a bit of heat sink compound back there. Maybe there's something back there. I'll clean that off. So in our diagram. Oh, Rosie, the orange wire went to this side. This is a course where I could use an extra hand. Actually kind of a handy little device. So I'll make sure I've got this all in frame. The white wire is going to come to here. Apply a bit of solder. I've already tinned the lead. You can apply a bit of fresh solder here. Maybe a bit more to the lead. This isn't a great mechanical contact, just using the solder to attach these. I'm going to let that cool off for a second. And I'm just going to make sure the shrink tubing actually will slide all the way up over fully, and it does. So, didn't want to get all three soldered. So, with the face up, white, black is in the middle. A bit of fresh solder. Got a bit of a solder ball on that. shortest here. Give myself enough length to be able to get physically on there. As you can see things are just enough out of the way. So, face up, orange, black in the middle, white to that side. Now the question becomes, if I still got enough working length for the regulator to come back and mount without unduly stressing the leads. And I do, it's not beautiful. So, Coax the shrink tubing up. Hot air gun. I picked this up at Radio Shack. Deeply discounted when they went out of business. It actually works well for this, for what it is. Uh, I don't have the little heat deflector centered. Electrical power. So apologies, this is going to make a bit of noise here. Let's power switch. It's actually relatively quiet for what it is. Feels like it's getting up to temp. Shrink tubing shrinking nice. Set this aside. 
started to cool off. Hopefully you can see that the uh, hot air gun, hopefully that's going to capture and focus. Did a really nice job. They're all about the same length. They look clean. Mechanically this is kind of ugly because uh, it can flex those leads and break them off the package. Uh, that is what it is. Not quite sure what that is on there. Looks like it may have been a, be a little bit of dead heat sink compound. It certainly, in my opinion, wasn't enough to have done much. The back of the package is actually really clean. Let me get some heat sink compound. This, this is done better. That, of course, means finding the voltage bucket or heat sink. My collection of voltage collectors or voltage regulators, heat sinks, etc. Again, I've been collecting these since I was a child, but I'm pretty damn old now. There's a lot of new old stock in here, but I keep the uh, heat sink compound in here naturally because that's where the regulators and heat sinks are. I could have potentially put a fresh 7805 on there. There's one I salvage. There's a fair amount of salvage in here as well. Uh, but as it's working, I think the uh, previous regulator is good enough. Let's see if we can get a little bit on the board here. That's actually going to be probably too much. easy to get too much. Thin that down a bit. Hardware back. And as always I've got heat sink compound all over me. This stuff just ends up everywhere. Tricky the washer. Hopefully, I can get the nut to start from this side. I think it cross threaded. There it goes. Just tighten that up. It doesn't need to be super tight, just enough it's not going to work loose. Cleaned up that wiring. Triple check. I got her face up. Orange, black, white. So I'm satisfied that's on there correctly. Wipe off a bit of the excess compound. Or smear it around and make it worse. Something I just haven't mastered is heat sink compound. I always end up making a mess. That's much safer. It's mechanically okay. These leads aren't stressed. The white one is a little tight. There's still some flex in it. The other thing I'm going to do while I'm here is although those leads are soldered on the back side, the solder didn't flow through to the front side. And so I'm going to go ahead and add solder on the front side to these leads. We'll just make it mechanically a little bit stronger and give it a little better 
electrical connection. And to do this, it's going to take multiple hands. I really need to hold the leads in place so they don't pull up through. I've actually got kind of a small tip on my JBC pencil here for this, although it's more than capable of doing the job. Probably should have added some flux. I think most of that solder flowed through to the other side of the board. There, that looks better. Yeah, some fresh flux on here would have been really good. The ground one, I'm not sure how good I'm going to be able, just because there's so little lead showing, I'm not sure I can do anything with this, but I'll give it a shot. I don't mind having the wetted solder on the top side of the board as well. I think mechanically that's better. Is that flux? Yeah, that's flux right there. I do believe that's uh, much improved over where it was. Mm -hmm. These aren't going to get accidentally bumped and shorted together and take a power supply out. I'm actually sitting here wondering if I should uh, add some fuses or at least some poly switches, uh, perhaps. And then incoming power to the bus. I don't remember there being fuses. Anyhow, I just wanted to just be a, a, a quick video on cleaning this up even though it's not factory uh, I'm happy with it so I actually missed this in the second video although I meant to get to it and then realized uh, I actually need to speak to it so part of that 4050 mod J1 here has been cut as well and in the factory configuration there should be a jumper there and so I'm just gonna go ahead and take care of that now So, I'll remove as much of the, I don't know, I've got some lead poking up here that I can hopefully pluck out of there. And it's lifted up out. There's lead kind of poking through the other side. I don't know if I can get it to drop out on its own or not. actually poking up there. Not a lot of lead, but I might be able to get onto it with the tweezers and then heat the joint and pull it up out of there and I can. So that gets the old jumper lead out. Let's go ahead and clean this up. And a quick note on why I'm going to do this on the back side of the board. On the front side of the board, there's lots of exposed tinned copper. So if I was to flick solder, it could easily stick someplace and kind of make this look a little ugly. Because the back side is silk screened, if I flip a little bit of solder around, uh, it shouldn't stick anywhere except it, uh, possibly where there's other copper, you know, exposed. But I'm gonna just add a bit of fresh solder to both of those. And, oh, that was ugly. Just a bunch of flaky solder there. Not sure that cleaned out well enough. If I can get a little bit of lead here. Open up those two holes. We'll take the uh, screwdriver if I can find it. 
Well, that's weird. We were just using it a few minutes ago to remount that heat sink. Now, of course, it's touched the bench, so it's turned invisible for what could be a significant amount of time. I'm sure everybody experiences this. Uh, well, shoot, where did that screwdriver go? It should be just laying here in the mess. And it's not. Just got a much better bend wrapping around something of a similar diameter. That's a complete mystery. Not over here on the side table. Oh, duh. Go ahead and get our kind of working diameter on the wire. get it to go through. Yes, the bench is a mess. Jumper's in place. Hold the board up so the pins don't get pushed out. Tack it in place on the front. get us back I believe to fully factory configuration uh, that jumper was cut as part of the 4050 mod uh, that was actually that extra wire that we identified here so this extra lead that we identified that is sitting from this arrow and comes across to this arrow that jumper right there had been cut uh, I'm not exactly sure why they did that. I'm of course flipping the paper where it doesn't get me the side of the card. But that was part of this mod here, and I just for whatever reason missed uh, putting that jumper back in twice. So anyhow, just a quick add-on here to this third video, and I'll wrap this up. Hopefully this time I can go get this edited and done. We'll talk soon. Thank you.